So in this preview, I'm going to refly a prior leg of the Pacific Northwest series. It's actually like the first or second leg way back at Mount St. Helens, starting at Portland International. Since I created this flight plan, they've added a bunch of points of interest along the route in World Map and Flight Simulator with the various world updates that weren't there when this flight plan was created. The aircraft was a DA-40 for the original flight. I've renamed the waypoint numbers to USR numbers, so the newer version of the Garmin cockpit in the DA-40 should be fine for this flight. I was going to name these POI to differentiate them as roadmap point of interest, but if I do that, it'll screw up the Garmin cockpit in the DA-40 and I think the Pilotus and the Cessna, so it was just better to name them USR points and conform to what the Garmin's going to rename them to. So, let's go ahead and fly it. All right, you can download and fly this flight at simflightplan.com. I'll include the link to this one in the description box. Download them, load them up in world map, and you're ready to fly. So you can already see Mount St. Helens off there in the distance, straight out of Portland. The first waypoint is Yale Dam. There's no rush to climb, but if you want to get a head start on the rim of Mount St. Helens, it's at, I think, about 8,000 feet. So we're coming up on Yale Dam, and you can see Mount St. Helens looming off there in the distance. If we look over to the right, we should be able to see Mount Adams. Oh, it's just peeking over the hilltops here. Once we crest Mount St. Helens Crater, then that's where we're going to head for the next waypoints, which are points of interest from world map. We've got the altitude at 2,000 feet. I'm going to... I'm gonna bump that up to like 3,500 because I'm at 3,000 or pretty close to it. So maybe 2,000 is the ground elevation for Yale Dam, but there's Yale Dam. It was on the original flight plan. And it's basically just a good point to start climbing for the crater of Mount St. Helens. Our next waypoint is Mount St. Helens at 8,500 feet in 15 miles. You don't have to get too aggressive, but don't waste a lot of time either. So we're just about to the crater of Mount St. Helens and you can start to see Mount Rainier peeking over the, over the edge. That's on a later leg of the Pacific Northwest series. And over there is Mount Adams, which is where we're headed next. We're not going to climb to the crest of Mount Adams, but the lava flows are at the foot of it, which is our next waypoint. But we'll take a spin around the crater for sure. Can't climb to the top of Mount St. Helens and not take a spin around the crater. So that's the north slope that slid away during the eruption in the 80s. There's that one spot, that very circular spot right there. I think I saw that that's where the heat from below is melting up through the glacier. And our next waypoints, Tok Tok Lava Flow at the foot of Mount Adams. I don't have an altitude for it yet because I've never flown it before, So, but I bet we can descend at least a couple thousand feet, pick up some speed maybe. It's 24 nautical miles away, so we can cover some ground. So we're coming up on the Tuk Tuk Lava Flow here at the definitely on the flanks of Mount Adams here and I descended to about 6,000 feet ish I'll set it in the flight plan but that seemed to be pretty reasonable to keep me out of the hills on the way here so it should be pretty easy to spot doesn't look like there's any trees in the area I think I see it over there past the lake there it is it's our Tok Tok lava flow Presumably left from the last time Mount Adams erupted. And 
so that's Tok Tok Lava Flow and Jumbo Peak is our next waypoint, which I think we just follow this valley out. I wonder what I'm gonna have to clear for Jumbo Peak. 45, five, 55, six, 65, so 6,500 for Jumbo Peak, and I'm at 46, so okay, got plenty of time. So there's Jumbo Peak with Mount St. Helens in the background. You can see it's pretty distinctive. I actually noticed it on the way in coming from Mount St. Helens. I almost flew over to it to see what it was without realizing it's Jumbo Peak. And that looks to be Tower Rock right there. So that's Tower Rock. That was pretty fun. Didn't know that was here. I'm glad it's a point of interest in world map. So Ryan Lake should be right on the other side of this ridge. Oh, maybe not. It's down in that valley somewhere, I think. At least judging by our waypoint. Oh, yeah, there it is. Teeny tiny lake tucked up in here. So that's Ryan Lake. Looks like it's full of trees, felled trees from the Mount St. Helens eruption maybe, and all the strip trees around it. Well, that's interesting. I don't know the story of Ryan Lake, but there it is. I have to look that up. That's kind of interesting. Looks to be a lava deposit as well. And I guess I'll get back on course for Rift Lake Dam or Mossy Rock Dam, depending on who you ask. It is the Rift Lake Dam, the point of interest name in World Map and Google Maps has it as the Mossy Rock Dam, which I believe is the name of the town nearby. We're looking at Rift Lake down the valley there. So I guess we can descend and take a look at the dam. Who doesn't love a good dam? Oh, and we're coming up on Rift Lake Dam, and I didn't realize we're going to be coming in the other direction into Strong Field from where the original flight plan had us coming up the valley this direction. We're going to be coming in over town. I guess we'll have to make just a right-hand approach at it, because I think... See, do they even have a runway coming in this direction? Well, I mean, it's Mark 7, but I think that's going to be a tricky approach. We'll take a look at it. So there's what Flight Simulator has as the Rift Lake Dam, but if you look in the Google map, they call it Mossy Rock Dam, which corresponds to the town of Mo Mossy Rock downstream here. Oh, that's a good one. Got the generating station at the bottom and everything. Hey, that's pretty good. That's, again, a point of interest out of world map. Oh, wow, you can see right up into the spillways. That's pretty cool. I wonder if you could fly through them. Maybe in the NX Cub. It might be a big ask for the DA-40. Oh, no, I don't think you... No, you can't fly through those. But it does look like you can see through them. And there's Town of Mossy Rock. Ooh, this one's going to be tricky. There it is. Yeah, you can see right in the spillways. And then I think I just follow the road into town, right? 
the road right there will take me straight to the airport whether I use the map or not so I don't want to pick up much speed or or altitude any more than I have to anyway should be right on the other side of that valley where are we at let's see if we can make runway 7 seems like our runway should be right on the other side of this hill at 7-0 looks like the smart thing to do is uh just do a left hand approach see if this is doable yeah go around If I'd have gotten slowed down sooner, 7 would have been fine. Oof. Hit a little bit hard. 2.5 is definitely an easier approach. Anyway, this is Stromfield, and that's the end of the Mount St. Helens. Let's update, there's actually two of these flight plans out there. There's an original one that just flies straight to the crater. And then here to Stromfield, and now there's this one that includes four additional world map points of interest. Remember, these flights are free to fly, so just download them at simflightplan.com slash download. I'll include the link to this one in the description box. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.